Okay, so here's an Alex problem. It's one of the first problems discussing ions. And you may not be that familiar with ions. We've talked about atoms and the structure of atoms, which is a relatively simple concept. But now we'll talk about ions. They're a little bit more complicated. An ion is a particle that has electrical charge. And so in this particular problem, what we're asked to do is to recognize um, what forms of ions exist in the periodic table. So some atoms have a tendency to gain electrons, and when they do, they become negatively charged. That's called electrical charge. And they're called anions, A-N-I-O-N-S. Other elements in the periodic table, other types of atoms, tend to lose electrons, and they become positively charged electrically, and those are called cations, C-A-T-I-O-N-S. In general, metals become ionized, meaning they become charged by losing electrons, so they become positively charged. Non-metals, in general, gain electrons to become ions, and those are called anions, they're negatively charged. So since the periodic table has a geographic distribution of elements, meaning the, the metals tend to be on the left side of the periodic table, and the non-metals tend to be on the right side, there's a geographic distribution of cations and anions. So excepting for hydrogen, the metals, are these elements that do this essentially. Those are the metals. And of course, there's different types of metals. There's alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, so alkaline metals, alkali metals, sorry, A-L-K-A-L-I, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, post-transition metals, but those are all metals. So they all tend to form cations, positively charged ions. Whereas the non-metals are over here. These are the non-metals over here. See, there's a geographic distribution here. And so these form anions and they tend to be negatively charged. Now, there's no always, generally there's no always in nature, there are exceptions to this, but that's for the most part essentially what happens. Cations are over here, anions are over here, okay? So let me erase some of this. Okay, and let's take a look at how we go about this. Now, what it says here in the, in the top one is scandium has a charge of plus three. So notice that when they tell you what the electrical charge is, is plus three. The reason for that is that scandium has the capacity to have more than one possible charge. It could be plus three or it could be another charge. So they're telling you what its charge is. So if it's positively charged, plus three. By definition, it's a cation. A cation is something that's positively charged. So we would say that scandium plus three is a cation. Pretty straightforward. In fact, we could have predicted that by the fact that it's over here. It's a metal. Metals tend to form cations, positively charged ions, by losing electrons. The second one, now they don't tell us the charge, they just say calcium. So we come over here and we look for calcium. Calcium's right there. Well, that's a metal, so it's gonna be a cation. But now we also have to predict the charge. And here's what we can do, very simple rule. If the metal is in the first column, it tends to form a charge of plus one. This is just their personality. There are reasons for that that we cover in the next course. We won't cover it in here. 
In the second column, those metals tend to form plus two cations. And in, if you come over here to aluminum, aluminum has a tendency to form a plus three ion. So those are, those are the tendencies there. So if we look at calcium, calcium is in this second column, alkaline earth metals, it's going to form a charge of plus two or two plus is typically the way we would write that. Now let's look at the next one. So it's a cation and it's plus two. Rubidium, you got to look for rubidium. Here it is, rubidium. Oh, first column, so it's plus one. So rubidium, if it's plus one, we generally just write plus and then, of course, that's a cation, right? The metals are cations. Next one is phosphorus. Now, phosphorus is a non-metal. That's over here. So there's also generally rules over here. These are anions. Minus one for the halogens. Minus two for the chalcogens. Minus three for the nitrogens. Okay. And so if we look at phosphorus, phosphorus is right here. It's in the minus three column there. So phosphorus, generally, again, you write the number first and then the charge. So three minus, it means it has a charge of minus three. And of course, it's a non-metal anion. Next one is iodine. Iodine is right over here. It's very straightforward, minus one. So I... And again, if the charge is one, you just write the symbol of the charge. So we wouldn't write minus one, we would just write minus, okay? And of course, that's an anion because it's negatively charged. So knowing it's an anion is just based on the position. Knowing it's a cation is just based on the position. However, knowing what the charges are, we memorize these three numbers here and these two numbers here. And then we memorize that aluminum is plus three. Okay, there are a couple of other metals that are pretty straightforward. Zinc is generally plus two with very few exceptions. And silver is plus one with very few exceptions. However, it turns out that the transition metals, these metals here in the middle, like iron, for example, there's no straightforward rule for that. Iron could be plus two. or it can be plus three. Nature is more complicated with the transition metals. These elements here in the middle do not behave in general as simple as the metals over here do. So they can have different charges, okay?